Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only. <laughs> Steve Harvey got a radio show. <laughs> Steve Harvey got a radio show. Sometimes when I chuckle like that, it reminds me of my oldest brother that passed away. He used to laugh like that. It's kind of funny how genes get passed down through the line. I don't know why I told y'all that. Just so to share it with you, that's all. Wow. All right. I'm on good one today. You know, I was, um, as always, I always kind of ask God to help me, you know. Um, and and, and, and I, I, had, uh, I had gotten off track a little bit because um, one of the principles of success I want to share with you all today is the law of attraction. And that is a very, very serious principle. It cannot be ignored. The law of attraction, and, and I'm, I'm not going to be ex- able to explain it to you as well as the book Secrets can or as well as some people. I can only articulate it to you um, th- the way that I see it. The law of attraction is very, very real. The law of attraction is a principle of success. It is something that everyone has to adhere to. Now, whether you know the law of attraction or not, it does not make it not exist for you. This is the case where ignorance is not the excuse. The fact that no one told it to you, there is no pass for this one. The fact that you never heard it before, it it does not allow you to do it any other way. So let me see if I can... Uh, put it to you best I can, the law of attraction. The law of attraction, to put it real simple, is the thing that you focus on, the thing that you talk about, the thing that you think of is the thing that you draw to you. It's what you attract to you. That's basically the law of attraction. The thing that you talk about, the thing that you think about, the thing that you focus on, whatever it is, that is what you attract. The law of attraction does not differentiate from positive and negative. It only does what it does. What I am saying is this. In the law of attraction, no matter what you think of, no matter what occupies your time, No matter what you say or no matter what the focus is, positive or negative, the law of attraction knows neither one. It just attracts it. 
So let's use some examples here. I can just, best example I always use is me. That way I ain't got to figure out nothing. I can just tell you my side of it. Um, I was in a lot of debt one time in my life. This is before any of you knew me. Um, so you can understand, in case you're not think, I don't, I don't want you to think that this conversation is about your income level, cause it's not. It doesn't matter what income level you are. The law of attraction works in all aspects, money, family, relationships, job, career, love. It, it just works that way. Okay, here's the deal. I kept saying, Man, this debt is killing me. I got to get out. And I thought that was good enough. Man, this debt, man, everywhere I turn, I see debt. I got to get out. Man, I got to get out of debt, man. This debt is killing me, man. I, all I see is debt, and I got to get out of debt. That's what I thought was a good goal, to get out of debt. But what I kept saying was, you know, I kept talking about debt, and you know what it kept doing? It kept attracting debt to me. So guess what? So I could get out. That's all. <laughs> Is that crazy? Is that crazy? So it kept attracting debt to me so I could keep getting out of it. That is an amazing law to understand. What turned it around for me was I started claiming a life of abundance. God, I am seeking a life of abundance. I want to have more than enough. I want to be able to help other people. I want to have money to donate to causes. I want to have money to help other people in program. I want to have enough money to not only send my children to college, but maybe if I meet another boy or something, I can help another child. I just want to have a law of attraction so that I'll be able to provide my family the lifestyle that I want to provide them. I want Heavenly Father to be able to be an example of your goodness and your grace in my life. That is what I started saying. And guess what? That's what I started attracting. I'm going to have a great relationship with my children. I'm going to be the father that I always wanted to be. I'm going to be a good father. I'm going to be a good husband now. I am going to do the right things. I am going to be the type of example that my sons can look no further and go, I can be like my dad. I want to be able to be a, a place, a beacon of light and hope for my daughters to come to. That's what I started saying. That's what I started attracting to my life. The law of attraction does not care if you want it to be positive or negative. The law of attraction just attracts whatever it is you focus on, what you think about, the words that come out your mouth. That is what the law of attraction is. You cannot overlook this principle of success and expect to make it because of the fact that you've never heard of the law of attraction, because of the fact that you don't know how it really operates. It does not make it not exist in your day. You can start today attracting the right things to your life by changing what you say, what you think, what you focus on. Change the focus, change the thought, change the, the, the words that come out your mouth, and guess what? You change what you attract to yourself. You have got to ask yourself, why is it, man? Man, let me tell you something. Somebody said to Bishop Jakes one time, they said, man, everything you touch turns to gold. He said, no, I just don't touch everything. <laughs> man, is this crazy? Come on, man. He has a focus. He has a focus. See, he ain't just everywhere. Bring me any idea. Let me try that. No, 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 man. He has a focus. He has a law of attraction that's working where he's attracting things to his life that that's positive. That he can now that's not to say Bishop Jakes don't have problems, because we talk often and man, he have them. 
Oh, please understand. And he's not trying to attract the problems. But what he will attract is the proper solution for the problem. And ain't that all you need sometimes? God did not say that it would be easy. He just said he would be with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? God will make your enemies your footstool. God is powerful, man. His word is true. He do what he say he going to do. Now, all we got to do is do some of what we say. Because we ain't going to do everything. Just do some of what we say. We Okay, here's the deal. God is going to do everything he say he going to do. You and I just got to do some of the stuff we say we're going to do. Because he already know we ain't going to do all of it. Yeah, he clear on that. He clear on that. I ain't smoking no more. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, maybe not, you know. I I ain't I ain't gambling no more. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm a quick cussing. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please. Steve Harvey Morning Show is underway. I am your fearless leader, your apromonious, <laughs> your guacquarius, capricorni, mm. stellacious, mm. yeah, super, casual, <laughs> a fragilistic, Come on, you know, Mary what? Poppins, Break Mary Poppins up. a espy, yeah. Aladocious. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's who I am. Keep it stupid. Good morning, Sherry. Hey, good morning, Steve. Uh, 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 morning, uh, Sister Carly. Good morning, Brother Harvey. Uh, I, I, I venture to say hello, uh, Brother Kill. Morning, uh. And without further ado, that's a man who needs no introduction have been with me uh, through the thick and the thicker. (laughs) A man who has made a living complaining. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to some and wish for you the others. Please uh, uh, put them hands. And any booty that comes up out of your undead well, booty is good. Yeah. put it together and booty hand cleavage clap. What is that? Ah. Three different claps. <laughs> that three different claps. <laughs> uh, Deacon Def J. Thank you. Uh, I mean, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good All morning. Good. good morning. All right. How y'all doing today? Hey, What's how up, are you? Is the question, good, man? I feel pretty good, man. <laughs> pretty out there this morning, huh? Feel pretty good. You know what? You need to start your day off sometime. Get you need to get people's attention. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know what they call this? Elroy Smith taught me this. One of the greatest radio dudes in the business. Uh-huh. What's up, Elroy? If you're out there, somebody know Elroy. Tell him Steve Harvey shouting him out this morning. Elroy is the reason I'm in radio today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Elroy was the first one that discovered that this guy should be doing radio. Mm-hmm. Yes, Elroy we Smith. We know Elroy. Huh? We know Elroy. Mm-hmm. Elroy Smith. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to people who don't know. Y'all mm-hmm. always tell me to explain it to oh, people. Oh, I met him before. Mm-hmm. Elroy Smith actually taught me how to do radio, to put it into mm-hmm. some type of structure. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I wasn't structured. But he told me, <laughs> you're effective on radio because you're compelling. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what that meant, so I asked him. He structured now, sir? He said, no. No. you <laughs> are must hear radio. People tune in because they don't want to miss nothing you got to say. Mm -hmm. He said, that's compelling radio. And the great ones are compelling. He's saying, if you want to do this for a living, stay compelling. Mm. So what I just did this morning. That was compelling. Hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I learned something. What did you learn, Junior? We'll have to find out. (laughs) That that opening was compelling. Uh, Ignorance. uh, Ignorance. Coming up at 32 after, guys, a rude woman was escorted off a plane for fat-shaming people. We'll talk about it uh, and some of your worst flight experiences when we come back at 32 after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Well, it's becoming pretty apparent that uh, people just don't know how to be civil to people anymore. I mean, we, we're not civil to each other. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. Take, for example, all right, the latest shocking incident that has now gone viral. This is of a woman who was escorted off a United Airlines flight after she fat shamed two passengers calling them two big pigs. Wow. Yes. Yeah. The video posted, it was posted on social media. It shows a white woman ranting about having to sit between a black woman named Norma and her boyfriend. The woman complains that they were squishing her, <laughs> calling them two fat pigs. Here's a little bit of what was uh, captured of what the woman was saying. Take a listen to this. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how I'm going to do this for the next four hours. This is just impossible because they're squishing me. Like, freaking, yeah, I flew with my house. I don't have my choice. But at least they'll keep you warm. Excuse me. Can you find her another seat? Because I will not be verbally abused by this or anybody else. Um, yes. I will not be verbally abused by anybody. I'm not tolerating it. I can't. I can't sit here because it's both so big. I'm left and right. I can't. I can't even stand. Do you want to come up and stand and then we'll find? Yes, please. Yes, please. I need salad. You should be ashamed of yourself, man. What you doing is so terrible. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm not going to. Why don't you sit in between those two big kids? Kiss my fat ass, okay? Really? Who, who, excuse me, who do I report her to? Why don't you talk to me about this? Can you have the birth to come back? I would like to report and I would like to file a report against her. As a platinum member, I don't tolerate this. Nobody. I mean, I travel every week, and this is the first time I've ever put up with this crap, and I'm not having it. I am not starting my new year off with this type of negativity. What? Baby! <laughs> she says she flew with Miles. She didn't have a choice, but at least they'll keep her warm. They're squishing her. You got her. a choice with Miles. You can still pick your seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh I didn't know problem. It's just, it was just it was the two wrong black people. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah they the heard her say ones. that? No, them was the oh, two yeah. perfect and, ones. And everybody did. Oh, yeah. No, See, that right there, that was perfect. You had the perfect two. Nice Christian folk. But she kept complaining, so the flight attendants, they kicked her off. They should have put her in the bathroom. They kicked her Man. off the, you the flight. The, but did you, you yeah. the sister went Let off the and sister. said, I can't Should've say Should have made her fly between them, though. That would have been, been a nice look. Yeah. yeah. Man, we don't have no seats. You got to sit back mm -hmm. down. Keep your and I just raised my elbow a little bit, knocked that phone down on that floor. Boy, they had some pressure on her ear. <laughs> we Can you up. believe that, though? She can't get that, that she phone. she was saying that? Mm hmm In this day and age, Carla, unfortunately, I can believe it. I'm tired of people saying, I can't believe this. I can't. It's happening. It happens every day. Okay? It's trickling down from the White House. You yeah. ever been on a plane when drama jumped off? Uh-uh. No. Oh, yeah, I've been mm -mm. on the plane with that. I, I have been worst? on the plane where these two people behind me were so into each other that they got up and went to the bathroom. I saw and that. And did it? Yes. I, well, I don't know. I wasn't in there, but I'm but how long was they in there? They were in there long enough then to they get was it cracking. Doing it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. In the they lavatory. all over each other. That's nasty. I mean, all, that bathroom right there. When I tell you all over each other, all mm -hmm. over each other. <laughs> yeah, but that My bathroom mm -hmm. on the plane. And when we got off the plane, she went, uh, I guess it was her husband who met her. Because <laughs> she went right to him, honey. <laughs> no you lie. Wait a no lie. Wait a I'm not lying. When I tell you I, this actually happened, yes. The yes. person on the plane she making out with is not her it's husband. Not her, no, that wasn't her man. No, no. When she got off the wow. plane, that was her man. <laughs> who the hell he married? Steve, what's your worst <laughs> flight experience? <laughs> That's crazy. Trish. That is crazy, right? <laughs> yes. Because we were getting offended because they were all over. I'm telling you, all over. They each were getting other. on y'all. Like yes. Newlyweds, yes. Huh? yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just two freaks. <laughs> <laughs> freaks. Uh -huh. Get a room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see. I didn't see people in first class argue like crazy. Just on space above the. Oh really? You know, overhead oh. space. Uh huh. I mean, they they feel entitled. So I didn't see some some serious arguments. Crazy. Wow. Steve, really? I know you have something crazy. Oh, no, he didn't bend in them. Uh -huh. <laughs> I thought oh, we yeah. had him to say something. Oh, you talking about, like, flight experience? The worst mm -hmm. flight experience. Mm -hmm. no, I ain't had no worse. I had too many of them to have a worse. Go ahead and give us one. Yeah, I've had. I've sat next to people. And, you know, when Obama was running was for president. I was just going to ask you about that mm -hmm. story. Yeah. That one right there was an interesting mm -hmm. one. I didn't I wouldn't. I wouldn't. We were sitting in first class. So. Mm. 
sitting next to this really cool white guy, man. We had a great conversation, and uh, we were just talking, man. We laughed a couple of times. And uh, he was sitting against the window. We were in first class. He said, uh, um, can I ask you something? You know, I'm not, you know, I guess I'm not, uh, you know, saying one way or the other. You know. uh, mind if I ask who you, who you, who you, uh, who you voting for? I said, yeah. I said, I'm, I'm voting for uh, Barack Obama. He said, wow, that's interesting. He said, well, you know, I don't know how this is going to sound. I just want to ask you a question. Are you voting for him? Uh, did you have a reason why you're voting for him? I said, uh, yeah, yeah. He said, why is that? I, I said, you know, he's African-American. He said, you're, you're simply going to vote for him because he's Af- African-American? I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You don't have you don't care about the issues. No, that don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Voting for him because he's black. I said, let me ask you something though. Is that the very same reason you ain't gonna vote for him? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, his ass looked out that window. <laughs> he didn't talk to me for three hours. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and he kept his face pointed at the window. <laughs> Neck was hurt. Now I'm riding, just looking upside his head, cause I'm waiting on him <laughs> yeah. to turn around. He got Say real for him. Oh, he got real. Right. Cause I said, look here, partner. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't care about the issue? No. You gonna vote for him just cause he's black? Yeah, yeah. I said, but let me ask you something. Is that the very same reason why you ain't gonna vote for him? <laughs> Silence. Boy, he looked All out right. that window. All right. Coming up next, it is the nephew <laughs> with Run That Prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, guys, it is so cold in Chicago. Get this, Steve. The Chicago River is frozen. Man. Frozen. Did you see (laughs) it? Wasn't it going to downtown? Yes, Yes. it's frozen. Rock solid. (laughs) Yes. Plus, in entertainment news, uh, cops spot the, uh, some persons of interest on the surveillance video in the Jussie Smollett case. Uh, Nick Cannon is going to host for a couple of days for Wendy Williams. But right now, the nephew is here to run that prank back. What you got, Neff? Drug test. Huh? Let's run it. Drug test. Drug test. <laughs> yes. They're going to run take that. It. We're going to have to take it. Drug <laughs> test. Run it. Here it is. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a fake please. This is she. Hello, uh, this is Officer Rogers from the uh, probation department. Yes, sir. Listen now, um, you have been uh, on probation for a little over a year now, am I right, Faye? Yes, sir, you're correct. Now, you're supposed to be serving two years probation? Two. All right. Now, I'm giving you a call, actually, uh, bringing you a bit of bad news, and I, I hate to do this, but you you came in, Faye, a couple uh, couple weeks ago and did a did a uh, drug test, am I right? Uh-huh, I sure did, I did. All right, now, Faye, I, don't, I hate to bring, bring you some bad news, but the actual drug test that you took has come back positive. Oh, you're a and- lie. That's a lie, that's a lie. That's a lie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, you came in a couple weeks ago. You took a drug test. This drug test has actually come in positive. Now, what I want to say to you is this. You're going to have to actually. No, sir. My test wasn't positive. You got yes. the wrong person. Hold on a second. I either need you to to come in to me, or I don't, and I don't want to save the embarrassment of having to send the car out to pick you up. Now, I don't give a damn how much embarrassment you're talking about, sir. I gave you some and my was good. Ma'am, right now you I got you a. Po- say. Uh, you have a positive drug test. You have you 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 come up positive, ma'am. Now you're gonna if have to use actually- your. If they use your, if they use mine. We use the one that you brought us. Now must have, here- must have been the wrong one. Couldn't have been. Ma'am, have been, let- sir. I'm sorry, sir, but I wouldn't have gave you no bad urine. It just wasn't me. Ma'am, now, I'm I don't want to have a. Back to jail. I don't even know why you would call me with this nonsense. I got Ma'am. children. I'm trying to do right. I don't know why you would call me. I wouldn't have gave you no bad. That's not me. You said lie. Ma'am, you listen. Lie. Uh, you you actually have to come in and do another three months now. Oh, sir. Y'all can come pick me up. I can tell you right now. I can in your hand if you want me to. Ma'am, your your urine has come back positive of drugs. Now, I don't I don't know any other way to explain it to you. You've been actually evidently using drugs again. Sir. I'm trying to tell you, I don't use no drugs. 
I've been clean for a year and some months now. You got the wrong <laughs> That's not my <laughs> now, How do you I'm telling you that? How do you know it's not yours, ma'am? It's, it's got your name on the lid, everything. You have come back positive. Well, evidently, you put your name on it because that ain't my And I would have came back. My would have came back good. You can't call me and tell me I gave you some bad You can't call me and tell me that. That's a negative, L sir. That's a double negative. It's not a double negative. It's a double positive. You've actually come back positive. Faye is written here on the actual cup. Maybe you have more than one Faye. No. No, we don't have more than one fate. You're the only fate. I've actually double-checked that myself. You need to either come in or we're going to have to come out and haul your behind in here. Well, I need you to come right now because I got the right now. Come right now. Come on. Are you trying to tell me that if I come and pick you up and take your urine now, your urine is going to come up negative? Is that what you're saying? I'm telling you that. My, you're double positive with that. My urine is going to come up negative. <sighs> Ma'am. I, I hate to, I, I, I don't want to come out, haul you in in front of your family, but you're actually going to be coming in and you're going to do three months. That's all I can tell you. I don't you're have gonna... confidence, sir. You got the wrong say, Eleanor. You got the wrong It's one of the two. Might be both. You got the wrong You got the wrong say. I'm I letting you. I ain't had no positive I ain't had no positive I'm trying to tell you, I got kids. I mean, I, I ain't had no positive Listen, ma'am, I'm telling you one more time. You either want to come in or want me to come and get you. Which one? Let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to find out who the you have. Because that ain't my Don't call me no mo and tell me nothing about you got some, some that is, that is not good. I gave you some good How many times I got the for y'all? Y'all keep picking up people, falsely accusing folks. Y'all had me saying some Miss my children. Now I'm hot. I've been giving you good and you still want to with me. I'm tired. I ain't giving you no bad. Don't call me no more with no like that. And where is my probation officer? You say your name is what? My name is Officer Rogers. Sir, I don't know Officer Rogers. Like I said, you might be the reason why the came back positive. You might be the reason. I need to speak with Mr. Williams. That's my probation officer. Officer Williams, no. I have clean at all times. Mr. Rogers, you shouldn't be calling me. I should be calling you because I'm going to, evidently, I'm going to have to come down and haul your behind in myself. Well, you can bring your phone. And when you come, you bring Mr. Williams with you. He'll let you know I don't have no positive. You can come to my job. I got... I, you got, you know what, there's one more, there's one more thing that I need to, bring your on. come on right now, come on, I got one more thing I need to say to you, are you listening to me, what is it sir, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, you just got pranked by your sister, <laughs> Allen, I know one thing, y'all play too much, <laughs> y'all play too much, that whipping, I was coming to get Mr. Rogers. She gonna get that whipping. <laughs> Say you all right? No, no positive. <laughs> get the hell out of me. Had me thinking I was doing drugs and didn't know about it. Somebody please tell me I'm not. I'm gonna need y'all not to play with people like that. Okay. Say you all right? Hell no, I'm nervous as hell. It was, it's your sister. She put me up to it, baby. Well, when you ever see her, you see what she looked like. I'm gonna beat the hell out of her. <laughs> I got one more question for you, baby. You got to tell me this. What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> You're up there. Hey, That's it right there, you know, man. You got, you got the people on sometimes. Yeah, hey, you up there. You up there. I'm just telling you. Wow. Yeah, oh, everybody okay. done took one before. Okay. You don't get tired of getting cussed out or nothing? Hey, like... man, it's part of the game, baby. <laughs> okay. It's part of the game. 14th, 15th, and 16th, February, baby, the nephew. That is Valentine's night. I will be in Colleen, Texas. There's a brand new comedy club. It's called Twice As Funny. Colleen, Texas, to all you troops down there. You know I support you very, very well. Y'all come hang out with the nephew. February 14th, 15th, and 16th in Colleen, Texas. Texas. Tickets on sale right now. And the very next weekend, West Palm Beach, Florida, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. The nephew will be in town at the Improv in West Palm Beach. So back to back. Colleen and then West Palm. I'm on my way. Well, you go on Forensic Files, they just take just a teardrop. Yeah. Just get all of yeah. it. Just on Forensic Files, they don't miss nothing. <laughs> Is this a teardrop? Cool. We'll, we'll let you know who killed. <laughs> we'll have the results, man. <laughs> Give us 10 minutes. <laughs>
As long as Peter Thomas get through talking, we got it. <laughs> All right, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you. Uh, the cops spot purses of interest on the surveillance video in the Jesse Smollett case. And uh, mm-hmm. definitely we're, you know, And could they do me one favor? What's that? I'll tell you that when we come All right, back. all right, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Life-threatening cold grips much of the U.S. The Chicago River is frozen. Whoever thought that would happen? <laughs> In a long time, yes. Down by the river. Yeah, meteorologists are saying this is the coldest air in a generation. There's a state of emergency which has been declared in Illinois, in Michigan, and in Wisconsin. Please be safe out there and listen to your city officials as to when it is safe to be outside, okay? Because it is not safe. It is not safe. Uh, Also in today's entertainment news, cops investigating the Jesse uh, Smollett attack say they finally have a lead from the surveillance video, but they are going to need to uh, some help from the public. They're going to have to hear from the public to help locate the uh, persons of interest. Chicago PD say detectives were unable to find the camera angle that revealed the persons of interest that are wanted for questioning in the assault and battery. But um, they are and they're careful not to call the people suspects in the case just yet. But police have released the images of the persons of interest. Jesse, Jesse, of course, says two men in ski masks jumped him, beat him up, doused him with bleach and left him uh, with a rope around his neck before fleeing. He says they yelled MAGA country as they got away. Wow. Wow. Man. Yeah. This is still, yeah. you know, one of the biggest stories out there. And it has, um, you know, everyone in entertainment has has weighed in on this situation uh, as well. I think even Nancy Pelosi um, really texted something. Yeah. It's it's gotten. How about the part. president? Oh, no. No, no, no. 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 Oh, no, no. He hasn't no. announced Not that. yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. yeah. Let me check the t- Twitter timeline, because that's the only way he communicates with us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He just can't say he, it. It goes months not, without a press conference. Check last night, Carl, see what he said. <laughs> okay. But you know what? They're going to find these people, because they're going to stay on it, because um, there is a camera everywhere in the downtown area of Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to find two guys show up on one of these cameras going in the area or vicinity with the same clothes on when they go in, same clothes on when they come out. Mm. That's that's all. And then we got to do some research. We got to do some other cam work. They're going to do some other stuff, but they're going to find them. Yeah. They're going to find them. How's Jesse Jesse doing? Uh, He's recuperating. He's out of the hospital. Good. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, they That's had so your sad. video on TMZ talking about it. Uh, they talked about Terrence Howard, you know, Jesse's mm-hmm. co-stars, Taraji P. Henson, like you said, all the celebrities, everybody. They need their ass one, man. No, for real. They need their ass one. You know, man, I uh, I posted, I didn't think that much of it because you know, I had read uh, Bishop Jake's response and I'd seen a couple of videos and that's that's not the way I am. And so I just did the one I did, and it went kind of crazy, man, because I, I can't tell you that the people who contact me about it, you know, yeah. wanting to make it a story. I don't want to make it a story because it ain't about me. He's just such a likable guy, you know, everybody cool in Hollywood and even politicians, they really like him. He's an activist, you know, and he stands up for what he believes. And, yeah, he's a cool guy, a smart guy, you know, talented From Cali. guy. He grew yeah. up listening to us, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, his yeah. whole family, the Smollett's. They're a showbiz family. Journey, his sister, you know, uh, she's also in the business. So, okay. yeah. Anyway, but uh, um, we're watching this story, of course. And in other entertainment news and political news, uh, Nick Cannon is going to temporarily fill in as host for uh, Wendy Williams. All right, Steve, let's get to the headlines, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thanks very much, everybody. This is Antrip with the news. A huge swath of the U.S. is still dealing with deadly, deadly below freezing temperatures and wind chill factors. You heard Shirley just talking about what's going on in Chicago, what's going on in the Midwest and the Plains. Uh, they're especially urged to get to local warming centers in their areas. Schools and businesses are closed. Airports are all but shut down. There are no mail delivery yesterday in at least 11 states and at least nine states say they're not going to be delivering mail today either. As the day's high temperature 
temperatures in the plains and the Midwest, especially upper Midwest, well below zero. So far, eight deaths are linked to this current situation, and not much change in the weather is expected today. According to the New York Times, lawyers for the family of Stefan Clark, the 22-year-old unarmed black man shot to death in his grandmother's yard in Sacramento, California, last March. Uh, that family has filed a wrongful death suit accusing the cops of racially profiling the young father for a crime he didn't commit and using excessive force. The suit says the cops failed to identify themselves. They gave no verbal warnings before they shot Stefan Clark 20 times. They claimed he was holding a gun. He was holding a cell phone, though. And the suit accuses the police of doing nothing to try and save Stefan's life as he bled out on the ground. With the current stopgap government funding deal expiring on February 15th, the committee of both Democratic and Republican lawmakers have begun negotiations. They actually began yesterday, aimed at passing a longer-term financial agreement. Cross your fingers there. Meanwhile, there is another deadline coming up, this one in March. Uh, U.S. and Chinese negotiators have begun talks aimed at settling the now six-month-old trade war. Uh, A March 2nd deadline has been set for the two sides to reach some kind of an agreement. Otherwise, the Trump administration has threatened to hike up tariffs on close to $200 billion worth of Chinese products. Georgia's own Stacey Abrams has been selected to deliver the Democrats' rebuttal to President Trump's State of the Union speech next Tuesday. Abrams, the black woman who ran and almost won the governorship of the Peach State last November, considered a rising star in the Democratic Party. Republican Brian Kemp, you may remember, won the election amid allegations that as a secretary of state, he was kind of in charge of the vote, and he helped suppress the black vote by disallowing scores of voter re- uh, registrations. Ten days after the election, Stacey Abrams stopped protesting the vote, but she never conceded. By the way, the female Legislators are going to be asked to wear white to show solidarity with each other during that speech, by the way, by the president. Top officials in the nation's intelligence committee strongly disagreeing with President Trump's boast about what he's been able to accomplish with the North Koreans. Despite ongoing negotiations, the director of national intelligence says Kim Jong-il does not appear to be willing to completely dismantle his nuclear program. Finally, today is National Hot and Spicy Food Day. Oh, food. Love it. Back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. During a press conference in Atlanta, Steve, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell broke his silence yesterday, finally, on that controversial no call during the NFC Championship game. Uh, take a listen. You know, it was the Rams against the New Orleans Saints. Take a listen to this. And officiating is part of any kind of discussion post-game. It's never a good outcome for us. Uh, We know that, our clubs know that, our officials know that. Uh, But we also know our officials are human. We also know that they're officiating a game that moves very quickly and have to make snap decisions under difficult circumstances. And they're not going to get it right every time. As I say, they're human. Uh, We have worked very hard to bring technology in to try to make sure we could do whatever's possible to address those issues. Uh, But... Technology is not going to solve all those issues. The game is not officiated by robots. It's not. It's not going to be. Wow. So is that is that sufficient, Steve? Uh, man, you know. Look, Do you think more I, technology would help? I, we have to, because these games are too important. We're going to have to make use of technology. It's only fair. Well, mm-hmm. see, it's not fair. See, look, if a player accidentally drops the ball his team has to pay for that but Steve it shouldn't be about technology it should be about it when it's a no call a, a, a coach should be able to say you missed something over here well I, I don't think that's but no you know technology what he was saying, sir, but, but I, sir if if you miss it don't we have to go to replay oh definitely that I'm not saying that that's what I'm referring to as technology I ain't saying we need drones, you know, Robots knocking like football. No, yeah, you're talking ass. about replays, more replays on certain calls. Is that what you're saying, Steve? Yeah, I mean, we have the technology. Yeah. We got those end zone cameras. Pylon we got the cam- pylon yeah. cameras. Get all of that. We got everything to see if a person really cl- crossed the goal line. We we can we can see if the football really went through the goal. We should really see if a penalty was a penalty. We don't need a more camera angle. Uh, we just need yeah. to go ahead and just review this play. I think the coach should be able to say, hey, you missed something. And here it is. Well, like, for example, if you could throw a challenge flag uh-huh. okay, in the last quarter of a game, 
you should be able to challenge a call. In the second half of a game, you should be able to challenge a call. That's what I'm talking about. I do like that. All right. Okay. Coming up at 34 after the hour, we're going to switch gears here. Relationship dating questions for the man, Steve Harvey, as we celebrate. Yeah, the 10th anniversary of Act Like a Lady. Think like a man when we come back. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All week, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of Steve's book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. Steve, congratulations again. And uh, now it is time to ask you some relationship questions uh, from SteveHarveyFM.com. These are from our fans here. Here's a question. This one was submitted by Erica E. She wants to know what are your thoughts, Steve, and your do's and don'ts of social media dating. She says, um, well, we can only assume that she means when someone hits you up on the DMs, uh, in the DMs. And also, Steve, what are your thoughts on online dating? Well, I'm okay with online dating because I think what it does is it gives a woman not the ability to hunt, but the ability to say, I'm available to be hunted. Mm. You know, I've said it a million times. Women don't like to hunt. They don't enjoy hunting. They don't know how to hunt. They don't like it. But what women are, are they're the absolute greatest attractants on planet Earth. They're the greatest attractants. But if you live in a restricted environment, let's say you go to the same church every week, you go to the same PTA meeting, you go to the same grocery store, and you got the same circle of friends, and y'all have tea at so-and-so's house. How many men you think you're going to meet? Hmm, Single right. men don't walk up in churches every weekend. They just don't. Yeah. You said that mm-hmm. yesterday. You know, you're not going to meet them. <laughs> After Saturday night? You know, you're not going to meet them at that same grocery store you go to whenever you go. You're saying come out of your comfort zone, ladies. I'm saying you have to come out of your immediate circle, mm-hmm. which could be your comfort zone. So more men can know you're available. And that's what online dating does. It allows you to put up a picture and a profile, put up a real picture and a true picture, a current picture, what you really look like, and be that person if you meet the guy online. Then get you another phone that's just for these dates that you meet online. And before you go meet them, get yourself on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Stop meeting people without FaceTiming them. And stop catfishing people with some pictures that are not you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to sit her there and come Today. in. That ain't you on the picture. Right. Ooh, that ain't her. Mm-mm. Or mm-hmm. him. <laughs> you know. And so, so what about like on the DM? Like, you know, you can hit somebody up in there. See, I don't know how to DM, so I don't know. If you want to DM somebody, you know, go ahead. If they want to respond, go ahead. A direct message. Yeah, you can do you all know. of that. But, you know, uh-huh. use your brain. At one point in time, Be the old-fashioned way is still what's going to have to happen. Even when you get through DMing, swiping right, swiping left. <laughs> Guess what? In order for this to turn into something, boy has to meet girl. At some point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Girl mm-hmm. has to like what boy says. Boy has to have something to say. The analytics begin, the feelings flow, and then you see where it go. But we've changed it. See, we so instant. It's instant, it's instant booty now. Everything's instant. <laughs> One yeah. more time, it's please. It's instant <laughs> booty. Yes, yes. I mean, and it's and it's to the detriment of women. <laughs> guys going, oh, man, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I look yeah. at how easy it is now for guys. It sounds and funny. And I go, wow. Sounds funny, but it's not funny. I mean, that, that's a real yeah. situation. That's right why they don't have nothing to yeah. say. No, yeah. for real. Yeah. I look at how easy guys get women now. Yeah. And I go, wow. Cause that was not the way it was for me. Right. Men respect things that they have to work for, right, Steve? Or I mean, absolutely. That's a challenge to them. Absolutely. Yeah. If it's easy come, it's easy go. Mm-hmm. Out the window. If it's window. easy to get with, it's easy to split with. We don't, we don't, we don't, if you act like Challenge. you passing out chewing gum, when you chew chewing gum and you get tired of it, what you do? Yeah. Spit it, it out. Away. But Throw see, it away. but see, Steve, when you <laughs> say things like that today to these millennials and others, uh, they think you're being old fashioned, it's old strange. school to, you know, they think that it's. That's a, why the question is about social media yeah. and the now. That's, yeah. that's why I, I understand. Said that. What about, mm-hmm. yeah. But at the end of the day, when you get through with the technology part and the mm-hmm. ability to meet a person uh-huh. online or whatever, 
Guess what still has to happen? Boy has to meet girl. Yep. Girl has to like what boys say. Boy has to say something to say. There's yeah. it becomes a physical exchange. Until that happens, y'all ain't got nothing. Yeah. All right. Well, go to Steve Harvey FM and submit your relationship questions. Up next, it is a nephew with a prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, your online friend is overstepping boundaries. Hmm. That is the subject of the strawberry letter. But right now, the nephew is in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got, Nev? No anchovies. Huh? So aggressive. No anchovies. Oh, okay. Why you be saying it like that? Black people don't Why eat anchovies. Why you mad about it, though? No anchovies. <laughs> Run it. Hello, Hey, man, who, 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 who is the person I need to talk to about? The, um, I got a pizza that's been messed up. Who do I need to talk to? Well, you can talk to me, sir. Well, what's going on? What happened to your pizza? Somebody put some f-ing anchovies on my pizza. Black people, uh, black people don't eat no f-ing anchovies, man. So, so uh, who, 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 the f-ing, who would do that? Who would put anchovies I, I, on my pizza? I don't want no settle that. Settle down with the language there, pal. All right. You know, if you got anchovies on your pizza, you just must have gotten mixed up with another order. I'll send you another f-ing pizza. It ain't a big deal. But I ain't asking no f-ing anchovies, man. What, what, matter of fact, let me ask you something. What the f- is an anchovy any damn way? It's uh, like a f-ing sardine. That's what a f-ing anchovy is, okay, pal? It's like a f-ing sardine. Hey, 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 let me tell you something, man. First of all, what's your name? What is your name? I'm Gino. I'm Gino. So you're the owner of the damn pizza place. Yeah, I own the damn pizza place. And I don't need people calling me and cursing at me because it was a mistake. You know, mistakes happen, pal. Worse things go on in this life than, than you're getting some anchovies on your pizza. Hey, man. Hey, okay. So here's the deal. I done had a bunch of guests come to my house or order pizza, and every last one of them got f- anchovies on them. You know what I'm saying? So I got an issue with it. I done spent over $50 with you with these pizzas, and the, and the sh- made wrong. Nobody likes anchovies. No, I told you something before. Black people don't eat no anchovies, man. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 I'm almost certain I've served anchovy pizza to black people before. Okay. The black people that I know don't eat anchovies. Okay. okay well, then we'll send you some pizzas without any anchovies on them. Hey, you know I what? Like I, don't like your, I don't like your attitude. You know what, man? You don't mess well, around maybe if you, you didn't come at me with so much f-ing attitude to start with, you wouldn't get no attitude. Okay, okay, look at it. Don't get your ass whooped, okay? Don't get excuse your ass whooped. What did you just... What, excuse said, me, don't... what did you just... Did you just threaten me? I said don't get your Who the f- f- do you no think you're so... talking... Who the f- do you think you're talking to, f- face? I, I, I'm talking to Gino, the owner That's of right. f- Pizzeria. You. That's f- Right. That's right. You don't tell me you're gonna kick my ass, okay, pal. You know where the pizzeria is. You know. Okay, so, you just so, calm so, the so, down. Do, do you? Do you? Want, okay. That's it. I tell you what, man. In the next three to five minutes, I'm gonna walk down there and kick your little ass behind putting these anchovies on here and having a little pompous attitude, like you think you can't get your ass whooped. You come on down here, okay? And we'll see. Do me a favor. Go yourself and the. The horse you rode in on, okay? And bring it on down here. All right, we'll take care of it there. Now, stop some anchovies up your f- ass, all right, pal? Okay, 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 cool. All right, cool. Okay, you okay, okay, okay. You like to say okay a lot, do you? Just yeah, is that one you, of your you, favorite you, words, okay? Yeah, you need to have somebody there with you when I get there, because I promise yeah. you, Gino finna get his ass whooped. Yeah, Gino's shaking in his f-ing boots, pal. Me and my anchovies, we're sitting here scared out of our minds right now. Okay, you okay, let me, me tell you. i dealt with clowns like you my whole f-ing life. Please. Okay, let, let, let me tell you this here. Do you, do, you, do you know who you're talking to? I'm talking to some f-ing idiot who don't know how to talk. That's who I'm talking to. No, you're talking to nephew Tom from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Mr. Gino, you just got pranked. You telling me I'm throwing f bombs all over the radio? <laughs> you dropping f bombs all over the radio, who, who, baby. Who, who I want to know who did this to me because they're getting some f bombs. Who guys, did this to me? Have, do you have a guy that works for you? Uh, he says he works uh, five to close. Andre, you got an Andre? You got a Dre that works for you? 
Yeah, I got a Dre that works for me. And Dre's going to be spending some time in a walk-in freezer. <laughs> uh, this is not Black people don't eat anchovies, huh? <laughs> Black people don't eat anchovies, baby. Hey, I got to ask you this, Mr. Gino. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Your show. <laughs> the baddest radio show in the land is the Steve Harvey show. <laughs> With no Steve answer, Harvey morning. Baby. No answer. Steve Harvey morning, Joe. <laughs> I mean, I'll be saying, I'm going to send you some pizzas. I'm sending that station dozens of pizzas with anch- double anchovies on every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't eat anchovies. Y'all eat anchovies? No, I no. don't. No. So you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, let me tell you something. Yeah. I had a meeting with Terry Kennedy, and I had a meeting with uh, Reginald Hutland. Oh, okay. The movie, movie producer. Yeah. yeah. Both of them love anchovies. We were at the same table. Mm. And Both of them love anchovies. I've never met a black person that liked anchovies. Them and I sat down and had lunch with two people at once. <laughs> <laughs> and then they asked you why you ain't had none? No, because all of us had ordered the Caesar salad. Caesar and the guy said, Mr. Harvey, you want anchovies? I said, no, no. Put that on there. Got around the original. He said, yeah, yeah. I like a bowl, a small bowl. <laughs> Oh, man, okay. And uh, Terry Kennedy said, I like the same thing. Mm. <laughs> you were just looking at them like, what? I said, hey, man, did y'all hear what he asked you? <laughs> now, he said, do you want anchovies? <laughs> he didn't ask you, did he want you bought the salad bought over? <laughs> he asked you, did you want anchovies? <laughs> oh, I love anchovies. I said, y'all got to be kidding me. <laughs> wow. I, t- yeah. I got ready to tell him. I said, look, it's a table over there with two white people at it. <laughs> and it's a big table. Y'all go sit over there with them. <laughs> Brings the anchovies to the your table. <laughs> no way them white bird. people didn't like anchovies. Y'all get y'all ass back over there with Steve. <laughs> go back over there. <laughs> no anchovies. <laughs> February 14th, 15th, and 16th, I'm in Colleen, Texas at the Twice as Funny Comedy Club. Twice as Funny Comedy Club, Colleen, Texas, 14, 15, 16. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That is Valentine's night. Bring your loved one out to come hang out with the nephew. And then the following week, I am in West Palm Beach, Florida at the Improv. That is February 22nd, 23rd, 24th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tickets on sale right now. No anchovies. Just like that. Tie all that in there together. No anchovies. Okay. At the comic club. No anchovies. No anchovies. I hope they give you some. Boy, (laughs) you want to see somebody with an upset stomach after that? But that is what what is in Caesar dressing, right? For, so for your true. salad, yeah. I like Caesar yeah. dressing. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, it's anchovies. I like that. Caesar? I mean, yeah. That's the I, taste. That's what's in that's that. That's the taste. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure, they It's a that. derivative of. Uh, because I know, Junior. <laughs> I need Caesar with no <laughs> anchovies. Like, where was you at? You got that information. Uh, right here in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you act like she cured a disease. I know. She a salad dress. <laughs> Not that big of a deal, Junior. Where were you when I you got that yeah, information no. at the restaurant, Junior? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm old. You never I never heard that before, huh? Never heard what? That anchovies and Caesar dressing. I didn't know that was inside. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, it is something. It, with yeah, it. yeah. Now right. we got to stop eating Caesar. No, no you like Caesar no, dressing. No, it's good in the dressing. Yeah, you like yeah. it in the dressing. Because they'll, I'll, some places I always tell you. Uh, we have anchovies in our dressing. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, they say mm-hmm. that on the menu. You just can't lay their little funky behind out there in the open where I can see them <laughs> with their little gamey ass. <laughs> that's what you're not finna do. Put this little funky piece of fish. I don't know where he come from. I don't know what part of the fish he from. I think it's from fish. I think anchovies is actually fish butt. <laughs> it's the inner lining of fish butt. Really, Steve? Wow. That's what really? I think anchovies is. I don't really think it's a whole fish. You think it's fish intestines? Oh, I'm thinking, no, I just think it's the in, right inside of the booty of the fish. Dave! That would be chitlin'. <laughs> All up around the lips. No, these ain't the guts. Oh. This is the lip area of the fish butt. <laughs> That's anchovy right there? That's what I think it is. What I'm going to put out there. But you like it on your Caesar dressing. So. I like it in the dressing when you grind it up. I can't look at it. Hell, I don't even want no fish, man. All right, listen. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we're going. We're moving on to the Strawberry Letter coming up next. Subject, your online friend is overstepping boundaries. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, guys, it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on work, on sex, on dating, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one. Right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, your online friend is overstepping boundaries. Dear Stephen Shirley, I need some advice, although this may not be your area of expertise. I am 27 years old, and I met my partner on a nationwide Facebook group. They have a lot of groups on Facebook, just so you'll know. They have traveling Facebook groups, a lot of groups on Facebook. So That ain't what this is. But that I'm just telling you, because I, I didn't even know what a Facebook group was at first. But anyway, because of the online group, my partner and I have mutual friends across the country. One friend in particular is trying my patience by blatantly hitting on my partner in direct messages, DMs, and leaving racy comments on my partner's posts. Sometimes my partner's comments can look a bit flirtatious, too. I'm concerned that this friend is going to try to make a move, and my partner is very naive, so this is a big problem. I have told my partner how I feel, and I basically gave them both an ultimatum to stop communicating, but my partner says that I'm just overreacting acting and it's innocent. Our relationship is good, but in this age of online dating and quick hookups, this is getting on my last nerve. I do trust my mate, but I feel like there is too much going on nowadays and nobody cares about being faithful and staying in a monogamous relationship. I don't want to start a lot of drama, but our relationship was going great until this other person started being disrespectful. My partner and the friend are planning to see each other next weekend at a group function, and there is no way that I'm going to sit by and let this friend take what's mine. What should I do? Take what's mine. What should I do? Can my partner be trusted? I'm worried. Please help. Well, from the sound of it, you should be worried uh, because, honestly, this sounds like a relationship with only one person in it, and that's you. I mean, yeah, you seem to be the only one concerned about your feelings. You have told your partner uh, how you feel and what bothers you and all of that, but he continues to keep in touch uh, with this guy who keeps with this other partner who tries to hit on him. But uh, you say your partner's responses to the other guy uh, looks like he's flirting back with him, with his other partner. Your partner is not taking... Hmm? What, What, Steve? What you keep saying, him? Well, because to me, this sounds like it's it's two guys. I could be wrong. It could be a girl and a guy. But it sounds like to me because he said partner. And he's not saying him or him or her or her. So I'm, I'm just saying that. So it may not be. All right, I'll start no, over. No, Shirley. I'll start over. No, 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 you're I, I think good. it's two no, guys. I, think I, I right. just heard what you were saying. I, yeah, I think it it's two guys. It threw me. I was just trying to get clarity because okay. I'm next. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I got to go and rewrite all my damn answers. Go ahead, Shirley, because I got to redo all my damn answers now. I think it's two guys. It may not be, but uh, anyway... He's flirting back, or his, the 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 partner is flirting back with your partner. Your partner is not taking your feelings seriously, and not only that, uh, your so-called partner is planning to see this other person this weekend. That's such a red flag to me. That's why, if you guys are in a relationship, is he making plans to see someone else? That's why I say you're in this relationship, it sounds like to me, on your own. I, I think, uh, you know, you say you trust him, but then at the end you you ask, can your partner be trusted? Is Again, is this really your partner? The only thing trustworthy about this is that he told you that he was planning uh, to, to go on this weekend with him. Now, now, you know, if you want to consider that trustworthy, uh, he's because he's still going. So you, if you're not going, you don't know what they're going to do. What should you do, you say? I mean, I, I think first you have to understand that you don't own this guy. Uh, you say you're not going, or this partner. You, you say that you're not going to um, sit by and let his friend take what's yours. Well, again, from his actions, he doesn't seem like, he, or your partner doesn't seem like he belongs to you. All right? He's kind of just out there, you know. He's with you. You say he's naive, but he's also, you know, 
doing things with this other partner as well, with this other friend as well. So I don't think this is a relationship. You're taking it way more seriously than your partner is. Steve? Steve. <laughs> yes. As you Harvey. Want. You're up. You're up. <laughs> Go on out there. <laughs> It, it says I need some advice, although this may not be your area of expertise. Yeah, it does okay, say that. Okay, okay, clear. Because this show ain't. Now, let me just start by saying this. <laughs> Let's just be 100, y'all. My expertise in relationships, I have found I'm more, most effective when I'm discussing what goes on between uh, the female and the male. That's been my specialty. That's what my book was about. I always, my specialty is empowering women. So I think the opening of this letter is very telling. It says, I need some advice, Mm -hmm. although this may not be your area of expertise. Now I kept waiting on Shirley to say she somewhere in this letter, but Mm -hmm. she never said, she kept saying he. And that's when I started asking, Shirley, what's happening? Did I miss some of these letters? <laughs> and Shirley's absolutely right. It sounds as though these are two men because of the term my partner was a lot, or of same sex, because I hear that a lot when mm-hmm. same sex relationships are referring to each other as my partner. So, okay, I'll do the best I can. It's a relationship, Steve. Okay. Uh, but you know, I have to be honest because I don't, I don't know the parameters. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if the parameters are the same. I don't know. I'm ignorant to it, so I don't know how it works. But I'm just gonna say this right here: uh, they, if somebody uh, is trying your patience by blatantly hitting on your partner in direct messages and leaving racist comments on your partner's post, then, hey, partner, I, th- I think. I yeah. think something about to pop off. Mm-hmm. That's just what I think. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. Now, if these is all dudes right here, then they're probably going to pop off a lot quicker. That's usually how it goes. Well, it's when we come back, I'm going to... Uh, it does on this say next, quick On this commercial up. break, I'm going to go into prayer. Pop the pop And then I'm going to come back off. with my answer <laughs> and hope I ain't got much time to give it. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up <laughs> uh, at 23 after the hour. Today's subject, your online friend is overstepping boundaries. Your online friend is overstepping boundaries. Again, we'll have uh, part two of Steve's response coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, let's recap today's strawberry letter. And uh, Steve, we want to hear part two of your response. The subject, your online friend is overstepping boundaries. Well, this 27-year-old person is in a relationship with another person. They're in a Facebook group with some other people. Mm-hmm. And um, so since they're on this online group, his partner and, and them, them have... Um, Steve Harvey. Mutual, what? Spit it out. Uh, them people that them, the people that's in the Facebook group, they have mutual friends, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so one of them is trying your patience by blatantly hitting on his partner or the other person's partner, cause they DMing them and they leaving racist comments on my partner's post, and sometimes my partner's comments can look a bit flirtatious too. There ain't no looking flirtation. Mm-hmm. It look flirtatious cause it is flirtatious. Now, I'm concerned that this friend is gonna try to make a move and my partner is very naive. So this is a big problem. Oh, so you your partner don't know nothing. That's what naive is. Ain't hip to the game. Green. Wet behind the ears. Got similac on their breath. Hmm. That's what that means. Yeah. So now, this is a big problem. You done told your partner how you feel, and you done gave, you done gave both of them an ultimatum. So you done just went, so where did you do this here? You just went online at the Facebook group and say, hey, you and you, keep on here. Keep on here. <laughs> That's what he said. You hear me? 
<laughs> but why you say it like I that? I know. You hear me? <laughs> He's upset, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, after you gave him that to stop communicating, your partner came and told you that you just overreacted, that this is innocent. Mm-hmm. Now, then you say y'all's relationship is good, but in this age of online dating and quick hookups, this is getting on my last nerve. Then you come back and you say, I do trust my mate. Okay, then what's the letter? Right. You're confusing me. Thanks, mm-hmm. But I feel like there's too much going on nowadays and nobody cares about being faithful and staying in monogamous relationships. Okay, then you don't trust him. Right. Then maybe y'all's relationship ain't good. You said it was, but it ain't. You asked, you gave both of them an ultimatum. Ain't nobody stopped. Your partner told you you overreacted. I don't want to start a lot of drama. Drama? See, that that ain't what... All right, let me just keep it. But our relationship was going great until this other person started being disrespectful. My partner and the friend are planning to see each other next weekend at a group function. What? Damn. What? Well, they just, they just in your face with it. Mm-hmm. Your partner and, the, and this online friend finna see each other next week at this function. But there's no way I'm going to sit by and let this friend take what's mine. What should I do? Well, it sounds like it's going to be an ass whooping at group function. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It what, Steve? It sounds like it's going to be an ass whooping at group function. <laughs> yeah, the it's group about down. to take on a whole new function. Do you, you finna go to show and tell. <laughs> this ain't hide and seek. Just hide and go get it. Yes. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. Come on, y'all. Let's get with it. <laughs> it's the monkey show. What the monkey? <laughs> Finna get up in here. You know how I feel about monkeys, man. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Trying to sit by and let this friend take what's mine. What should I do? You know what you got to do, dog. When you get to the event, you got to start swinging. As soon as he walks in the door, Steve. So roll your sleeves up. <laughs> Turn that corner like you on Jerry Springer. <laughs> Start taking Jerry, earrings Jerry. off. <laughs> get your rings out the way. If you got shoes on with a too high heel, get them off. Mm-hmm. Come around that corner barefooted and windmill it. <laughs> <laughs> and whoop. Whoop it. Now, what you going to do is, now, just like on Springer, uh-huh. your partner gonna try to break y'all up. Oh, okay. Oh, uh-huh. this finna be, I sure wish I could tape it. I don't know where this group function gonna yeah. be, but I can get a camera crew over there if you just tell me when it is. <laughs> now, Steve. We can't huh? promote violence, you know that. Violence is the uh-huh. answer. Right. Somebody pushing up on my girl. I done told them not to push up on my girl. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all say this just relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The fight. Okay. Now, you pressing up on mine, I done asked you not to, and you keep on. So when I see you, what I'm supposed to do? Press. Press. Mm-hmm. Well, me. I guess you have a point there. Ooh, I'm just I'm asking you what you want me it. to do. Have a discussion. <laughs> if you put it that way. Have what discussion? <laughs> I told y'all. <laughs> I told you at the top of this damn letter. I didn't like it, and I want it stopped. <laughs> you talking about you being innocent and I'm overreacting. Now, I asked you all that. Yeah. Now, y'all are playing to see each other at the group function? His partner's doing the most. Or, yeah. Yeah. Busy. Yeah. yeah. Busy. This function, I'm coming in in flat. <laughs> in <Vaseline>. flat. <laughs> no, I'm not wearing this heel with this boot on. I'm coming uh, in with flats. <laughs> oh, I got some Doche slippers. <laughs> I'm going to just turn this corner and just it is what it is. Start to <laughs> whooping on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, we got to get out of here. You can email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's strawberry letter at Steve Harvey FM. Is See you at the function. It's Steve Wright. <laughs> hey, See you at the function. Coming up in 10 minutes, our girl from the talk, the one and only Cheryl Underwood, right after this. You're listening 
to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, put your hands together for Cheryl Underwood. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Steve Harvey. Listen to me, son. You really know how to make one of them selfie a uh, videotape when you on somebody's side. What oh. you sent out about the Jesse Smollett was exactly what a lot of people is feeling. That we backing this brother no matter what go down. He didn't deserve this. This is bigotry and racism in America. You said it exactly right, Steve Harvey. And you got your yeah. angles good, too. See, I'm not good at the angle. That's why I don't do it, Charles. I don't do it because too much neck in my video. So I don't think people are going <laughs> to take me serious. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know how to do a selfie. Really. I don't either. But you did it good, Steve. You said what we felt, yeah. and you had an angle that made you look it attractive. A, mm-hmm. It was a good video, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It, it was. was. Somebody, it made me Somebody cry. told me that my lips were too close to the camera. <laughs> well, wait, that's, wait, wait, that's wait, a wait, given. Wait, I ain't going to touch that one. That's a Phil, you said he wait. was attractive? Uh-oh. It was attractive. I like the salt and pepper beard, Tommy. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of us rocking that. You know, if I don't shave mine, you know, they'd be like, Rocking that Steve. <laughs> Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah. Underwood, I have asked you. What? They say you rocking that Steve. Stop that. that. Cheryl. Steve is Cheryl. Rocking that Steve. I have Hobbs. asked you to stop that. <laughs> we just saying we love Jesse Smollett, and we, we going to yes. find out, get to the uh-huh. bottom of this. Now, wait a minute. So what that girl that what that girl that looked like, um, what that girl over at the, at the White House? What's the girl that do? What's her name? Sarah Huck- Huckabee. Huckabee Baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Now this, this, I'm sorry, Carl. I almost cut. She said, "God said mm. Trump need to be president." When did you hear say that? Oh, Sarah yeah. Sanders said, said that, right? Yeah, to be she said God said that he's supposed to be president. First of yeah. all, who you talking to? Because Trump, he own pastor, say he ain't been there in years. Have y'all read that story? <laughs> <laughs> he said his name on the road, but he ain't show up. He said his pastor. Let me tell you how white pastor get your heart. <laughs> Wasn't even that Bible study. They. T- <laughs> That's funny, Cheryl. Yeah, we talk about him so hard. Said so last time he was in here, he got married to Melania. That's last time he was in here. And then, let me tell you, it's so much stuff about to come out on Trumps. They got him. They got him. They got him. This is going to be the I best it when and I the see worst. It. Yeah. You'll believe when you see it? Mm-hmm, because they have so much stuff on them already. <laughs> but see, so you got to build it. You, but you got to build, build a, a real case yeah. on Trump because he'll slide out of something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It, it, and they want that power by any means That's necessary. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Cheryl. So That's you right. really got to get, when you get Trump, you got to get him and then get him on the on the state level because he can't pardon himself uh-huh. on the state level anyway. So get him. You know, I'm going to sit back, let Nancy Pelosi just handle it because she's handling it already. Oh, it's cold outside. I will be in yes. St. Louis. I'll Ooh. be in St. Louis at Helium. So, you know, at the, at, that's the club. That's what it's called, Thomas and Junior. It's called Helium. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's in St. Louis. Good comedy club. Y'all need to get oh, over there. They got, they got, yeah, they got the bag. Listen, I got to go pick up that bag in this cold <laughs> weather. Go you get know, it. You know, that's right. I got to go get it. So come see me this weekend. But get your, bring your pets in. You know what I'm saying? And look out for your neighbors and oh, people that don't yes. have heat oh, because, and everything. Yeah. You know, because, you know, you know a black dog be chained to a tree. Bring the dog in. <laughs> in the Cheryl, room, the, in the, <laughs> Cheryl, the Chicago Shut River up. froze over. Did you Man, see it? Listen to me. I couldn't believe it that it froze over. <laughs> you know, but black people so cold-blooded. They out there with their dress shoes on sliding on ice. <laughs> You know the shine on ice. Listen to me. Oh, Stephen. we like to mark the passing of James Ingram, yeah. one of the greatest singers in the world. That boy yeah. can sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was in, he, when he made Y'all Mo Be There, the good uh-huh. church record, Y'all Mo Be There. Y'all Mo Be There. Yeah. yeah. Come yeah, on, Yeah, that's Steve. the cut. Ain't it, Steve? Y'all 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 you know, his there. younger brother is the boy in Switch with the with the fly hair. Oh. The boy in Switch. His, his younger brother, Philip. Is the boy in Switch, the chocolate boy with the long hair. Okay. 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 You know, that's what all this is. And did y'all know James Angle, you remember Secret Garden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh-huh. man, that was on my get it tape right there. Don't get it tape. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He was singing that yes, yesterday. Uh huh. Yeah. Steve was singing that. Uh-huh. Secret Garden. Secret Garden. Get it Garden. tape. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's my get it tape time. I got the get it cassette what tape where I just push it in. Click the button. We were all James Ingram fans. Yeah. Yes. Tonight. Remember he was with Patty Austin? Mm -hmm. She'll come to me. Mm -hmm. 
It's press the button so this be my get it tape. Uh huh. Press the button. Look, yeah, this gonna be my get it tape. If I can't get it off Steve Harvey, it ain't to be got. Press the button, Tommy. What? It's to get it. We had to get it tape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Press the button on Steve Harvey. Like, girl. Oh, is the president that dumb that he don't understand global warming is not about oh, warm weather? Right. Is he that yeah. dumb? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he that? Yeah. Can yeah, I say that damn dumb. dumb? Can I say that? Mm-hmm. Is he that damn dumb that if damn he don't understand? Dumb. That's not about the heat. <laughs> that's about oh. that's about the polar cap, and it, and now the cold weather is seeping you, you, down. You, you that's what global too warming. Too much information. Who? Oh, the wait, president. somebody just asked me. Oh, what? yeah, he did that. Well, what I'm a show? Republican. I can say that. I'm a member of the party. If they stop cashing my check, maybe I'll stop talking and showing up <laughs> the stuff. But the cash check. Wait a minute. You say, wait a minute. Somebody want to know who I got in the Super Bowl, the big game. I win either way. I win either way because I prayed for the Rams and the Patriots to get in there, but I didn't want them to win ugly with the helmet butt up against the Saints. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like that. That's that's not how you play the game. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just slept with a lot of football players. <laughs> and, uh, Tell it, girl. Tell it. Did I go? Release yourself. Get inside information. Release yourself. Get it tape. Some of them got rings, and some of them didn't know how to go all the way and focus on how to win. I tried my best. I I, I gave all I could, you know, mind, body, soul. So you, I, boy, go out there. You can win. You can win. You can just, win. You know? He does not have an ounce of on my team. What? Ounce. Man, listen to me. You got one see, when you're sleeping with football players, first of all, you got pad, helmet, jersey, no bottom. No bottom whatsoever. That's right, Tommy. No bottom. No, no bottom. we got to go, girl. Whatsoever. We got to get out of here, Super Bowl Cheryl. of love. Thank you get so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jim Hill. Coming up at at the top of the hour, Cheryl Underwood. Carla's Carla's reality update. We'll see you later. Thank you, Cheryl. (laughs) Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let's go, Tommy. All right, it's that time. Get ready. She is here. Carla Farrell with reality update. Okay, thank you, nephew. Okay, crew. Celebrity Big Brother is off the chain. Let me just say that. Girl, that's crazy. (laughs) Is that good, Carl? I'm trying to tell you, Junior. Oh, no. Listen, Junior. So, you know, Olympian Lolo Jones and Tamar, man, they were about to fight. They got into it in the Celebrity Big Brother house. So, after Lolo called Tamar the B word. Ooh, that's strong. Yeah, it kind of jumped off. Take a listen. Uh, what you need to do is calm down. What you need to do is calm down and stop popping off. Well, nobody's popping off. This room, nightmare. Got okay. the room thing. Yeah. Uh, no. Right here. Because I'm telling you right now, I've always had your back, but I can't take this every day. I have my back. You don't have to have my back. I'm a big girl. Well, then let's. Can you say right here? I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh, I'm right here. Said, I'm, I'm right, right here. here. Lolo was not Lolo there. was saying that to Tamar. Yeah. World class I athlete. I, I, I'm right here. Man. Lolo mm-hmm. was not scared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was not scared. She was not backing mm-hmm. down. So she's saying, I am right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Tamar, you know, she was like, she from Baltimore or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Lolo was just trying to let her know she wasn't backing down and she wasn't scared. And then towards the end of the argument, as as you know, it went on. Tamar basically say you you got one more time, you well, know. Call. To basically, I know everybody always get one more. Call it, it's, and it's, then it, it, exactly. Is Tamar a scientist? More. What kind of shades is that on her head? What is, what <laughs> she is, had these futuristic <laughs> glasses. She on looked like me. she was Back to the Future or something. Yes. I didn't know what that was. Well, I don't you know, know what that was. Heard when she tied she, she that scarf on her head, though. But Look. you know what? Don't see when you don't really want none. Everybody get one more time. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. Steve. Johnny yeah. Wallace sucker punched me in the chest in the eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I yeah. said the same thing to Johnny Wallace. You got one more time. <laughs> yeah. Punch me that did, hard did it hurt, Steve? Damn chest. Hell yeah. yeah. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> yeah. He punched me third period. I didn't say that to fifth period. <laughs> <laughs> took two periods from me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it thinking about how to say that. It took me two damn classes to get my win back again. <laughs> He hit me so hard, back. I said, I told y'all, I said, 
funny. Then when I saw him two periods later, I said, hey, man, you got one more time. <laughs> Punch me that hard in my damn yeah. chest. <laughs> I gave him one more because, you know, that one right there, yeah. that was effective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, would he it be proved effective? his point. He yeah. proved his yeah. point. Well, tensions, you know, have been building up in uh, – in the house, you know, this is a game. They're trying to win two hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars. So you got to be real strategic with what you're doing. Folks are making alliances with certain different house guests and mm. trying to win head of household so you don't get voted out the house. So folks are lying on each other, trying not to get evicted. So that was some tension between Tamar and Lolo. Um, after that, uh, they're still there in the house and they apologize to each other. Oh, so, really? Yeah, they squashed oh, the beef. Oh, they okay. All right. But let me tell you who's playing the game strategically. Kato Kalen. He is oh, Kato, uh, uh, from uh, OJ. OJ's Kato? Why is yeah. he still on anything? What? Wow. He's in the house. Kato. He's a celebrity in, in, in the house. Yes, he's on the show. And he was head of household recently, and Tamar exploded on him. They went back and forth. Oh, Lord. And Kato... He couldn't reveal to Tamar his plan. So his plan was to get rid of another guy, the Olympic swimmer. You remember Ryan Lochte? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. Uh-huh. Right. Remember him? He so he, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, got a, he suspended from water. Yeah, he can't jump his ass in no <laughs> Well, water, he's going no back water. to the Olympics, though, yeah. in 2020. Well, not until he, he get up yeah, the suspension. Yeah, well, you know, the suspension. He ain't in no water right now. Did he bathe? Mm-hmm. He do all his swimming in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 well, anyway... Kato was trying to calm Tamar down because you just can't really reveal your plan to everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, what you're going to do, who you're going to get rid of. So the bottom line, they kind of talk Kato and Tamar. At the end of the day, they all had to vote as to who would be out of the house. Kato wanted Ryan out the house. His plan worked because Ryan's good. He's athletic. So you want the weakest people to stay in the house. Mm-hmm. You don't want get somebody weak and strong. Weaker, huh? Okay. Yeah, and athletic up in the house. So they wanted him out. So well, Lolo, he, what are they doing? Yeah, Lolo's there? still there. Yeah, Lolo's athletic. still there. Yeah. But that's that's the mindset that Cato had. Got what he want. Ryan was out. And then he let Tamar, you know, he had to let her know, this was my plan. So, you know, she just got to kind of let things happen and not just kind of go off on people to see the big pip- picture. Or she could be playing everybody, too. Cato was so good at the last house. Tamar saying. crazy. <laughs> yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. I don't know what y'all looking at. Tamar crazy. But my Tamar said, crazy, but she got everybody watching Celebrity that, Big Brother. I though. even want to watch. I've never watched the show before. I even want to watch it. Tamar is It came on last night. Yeah. Tamar is almost must-see TV. Yeah. I've said yes. that to her. My friend yeah. says she's not. She would not watch the show if Tamar wasn't on it. She, she said wasn't right. on the show. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's yeah. She's she's. Yeah. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't tune in for Kata. <laughs> right, right, Junior. Was, I, but you know what, Carla? I see why Anthony Scaramucci is gone. I see that. Now. Oh no, he didn't yeah. fit in no, at go. all. He, he don't even know. need the money. <laughs> yeah, he had to go. So I know this is a question. This is wrong, but hit me up social media at Lips by Carla. Who do you think would have won the won the fight, Lolo or Tamar? Baltimore's own That's Tamar. That's a hard call right there. Uh huh. All I right, we're housewives of Atlanta. Quickly, oh, let me no. get to it. That Baltimore is strong. <laughs> okay, you think Tamar? Okay, Lolo. Okay, well, okay, okay, you say Lolo. Let it me talk about Real Housewives. More than thirty seconds. It's hard to fight for thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. I'm right here. Y'all still on that? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> Man, that get my that attention. Yeah. Now that gets your attention. I'm right here. Well, it, and back to that then. When she said, "I'm I'm right here," mm-hmm. Tamar was saying, you know, like you said, Steve, you got one more time to say that. So Lolo was like, well, I'm right here. So then Tamar was like, well, then say it. Like, say the B word. And she did. No, I mean, it was kind of like... She already said it. Yeah, you hey, know. If he was that offended, like, why you didn't say that the first time? Yeah, because you heard me. You heard it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got yeah. my money on Tamar. Well, anyway, we ran out of time, so we'll talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta next time. Time to go. We'll be back at 20 after. Hey, if I with them glasses on <laughs> you, you will get your ass with them, with them goggles on. Man. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In political news, Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris's CNN town hall uh, meeting brought in ratings. 
Uh, big ratings. We don't know if uh, Kamala Harris can bring home the presidency, but she can definitely pull in those ratings, and we hope she can bring in the presidency as well, okay? The senator mm-hmm. from California, CNN Town Hall, brought in almost 2 million viewers, Steve. Mm. 2 million. Wow. That okay. was 75% more than the network's four-week 10 p.m. average, and the 1.95 million people were the largest. That was the largest for a single candidate town hall in CNN History, baby. Go, girl. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Madam President, <laughs> the, <laughs> the event also drew in more young viewers, uh, an average of 186,000 adults under 35. That's great. Oh, nice. That's great. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, it's very smart of her to get out front because she's the only one right now. Mm-hmm. Nobody else is committed. So she has front and center stage. She's on all interviews. She's all we're hearing from. The other people, I just don't, I don't know. I mean, I've seen the other, some of the other candidates just mm-hmm. talking about it. I like the guy out of San Antonio. Uh, Huli, uh, out of Texas, Huli Castro. Castro, Huli Castro, 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 Castro. Yeah. yeah. He a twin. Julian, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. He's a twin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, what, what his brother do? Cause, cause He's in politics, politics too. as well. I was going to say, because oh. when you vote for twins, you go for somebody got a twin, you're voting for two people. <laughs> Yeah, because if it's crazy ass, do something, everybody going to think it's you in it. Uh, <laughs> no, they both really in politics. You know about twins, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you got to watch them twins. I, you know. But like I say, you know, I've looked at a couple of people. So I've looked at the women that's running. Some of them are, um, I like uh, Kamala. Kamala. If, is, if Elizabeth Warren wants to win it, she's going to have to take another approach because she's like close to Hillary. Hillary talking about she might go again, but that wouldn't be... She won the election by popular vote. Yeah. They just didn't take care of the electrical. The, I mean, excuse me. The, <laughs> the electrical. <laughs> the electrical. <laughs> That's you, Starbucks. You ain't pay the bill. Yeah, they ain't pay the bill. <laughs> so we just sitting up here in the dark because of your stupid ass. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, uh, so, yeah. The Starbucks guy's a smart cat. Howard Schultz. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he, but he's a third party. What, yeah, did that you hear what Donald Trump said about him? What did he say? Donald hey, Trump said hey, he's hey, not going to run. He's a coward. Wow. wow. That's it? Wow. Wow. That's your sound bite? That's what the guy told me. Don't and he said anything. he better pay pay his rent with the Starbucks Oh, in the Trump Tower. Yeah. <laughs> See, he always just go low and just yeah. take shots at people. He man. makes it all man, about him. He probably don't even own that one. He makes it all about him all the time. Yeah, right. They're yeah. franchised out, right? I sold right? that one, though. Yeah. All right, well, uh, this Saturday, Steve, we have to tell everybody that you will host the NFL Honors at the Fox Theater in Atlanta. Oh, here, boy. And it starts getting serious today because today is rehearsal. Uh Uh-huh. So I'm rehearsing on Thursday instead of Friday because after I finish rehearsal tonight, I have to go to Miami Mm -hmm. for the Grant Cardone uh, Times 10 conference. Speaking in front of 35,000 tomorrow, Friday night. Great. All right, Jesus. Then, come uh, on here. I come back, <laughs> then I come back uh, Friday night, get up Saturday morning, go do the full run through for the honors. Mm-hmm. I'm working on my uh, monologue. Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't had a chance to do it. I, mm-hmm. I got a guy to help me. All right. Well, you'll be doing that. It'll be televised on CBS yeah. at 9 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Life-threatening cold grips much of the U.S. The Chicago River is frozen. Whoever thought that would happen <laughs> in a long time. Yeah. Down by the river. Yeah, meteorologists are saying this is the coldest air in a generation. There's a state of emergency which has been declared in Illinois, in Michigan, and in Wisconsin. Please be safe out there and listen to your city officials as to when it is safe to be outside, okay? Because it is not safe. It is not safe. Uh, also in today's entertainment news, cops investigating the Jesse uh, Smollett attack say they finally have a lead from the surveillance video, but they are, are going to need to uh, some help from the public. They're going to have to hear from the public to help locate the uh, persons of interest. Chicago PD say detectives were unable to find the camera angle that revealed the persons of interest that are wanted for questioning in the assault and battery, but um, they are and they're careful not to call the people suspects in the case just yet. But police have released the images of the persons of interest. 
Jesse, Jesse, of course, says two men in ski masks jumped him, beat him up, doused him with bleach, and left him uh, with a rope around his neck before fleeing. He says they yelled MAGA country as they got away. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this is still, yeah. you know, one of the biggest stories out there. And it is... Um, you know, everyone in entertainment has has weighed in on this situation uh, as well. I think even Nancy Pelosi um, really texted something. Yeah, it's it's gotten. How about the, the president? Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, no. no. Oh, no. he hasn't announced anything yet. yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll, let me check the t- Twitter time. Like that's the only way he communicates with us. Yeah, yes. yeah. He just can't say <laughs> he, it. It goes months without a press conference. Check last night, call to see what he said. <laughs> but you know what? They're going to find these people because they're going to stay on it because um, there is a camera everywhere in the downtown area of Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to find two guys show up on one of these cameras going in the area or vicinity with the same clothes on when they go in, same clothes on when they come out. Mm. That's that's all. And then we got to do some research. We got to do some other cam work, they're going to do some other stuff, but they're going to find them. Yeah. They're going to yeah, find Yeah, they have to get them. How's Jesse, Jesse doing? Uh, he's recuperating. He's out of the hospital. Good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Steve, they That's had so your sad. video on TMZ talking about it. Uh, they talked about Terrence Howard, you know, Jesse's mm-hmm. co-stars, Taraji P. Henson, like you said, all the celebrities, everybody. They need their ass whooped, man. No, for real. They need their ass whooped. You know, man, I... Uh, I posted, I didn't think that much of it because, you know, I had read uh, Bishop Jake's response and I'd seen a couple of videos and that's that's not the way I am. And so I just did the one I did and it went kind of crazy, man, because I I can't tell you the the people who contact me about it, you know, wanting to make it a story. I don't want to make it a story because it ain't about me. He's just such a likable guy, you know, everybody in Hollywood and even politicians, they really like him. He's an activist, you know, and he stands up for what he believes. And, yeah, he's a cool guy, a smart guy, you know, talented guy. He grew up listening to us, didn't Mm -hmm. he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. His whole family, the Smollett's, they're a showbiz family. Mm -hmm. Journey, his sister, you know, uh, she's also in the business. So, yeah. Anyway. We will definitely be keeping our eye on this story and keeping you posted. Uh, Coming up, it is Steve Harvey and his closing remarks as we get to our last break of the day. We'll be back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are. Last break of the day. We've had a good day. Thank the good Lord and uh, take us out with some great closing remarks as you always do. Well, these remarks, um, again... Is in the uh, vein of encouragement. I want everybody who's interested in becoming successful or more successful, anybody who's interested in becoming happy for the first time or becoming happier than you are, I have a couple of points for you that can be very helpful. Point number one, align yourself with like-minded people. You know, I want you to understand something. They do exist. They do exist. People who think like you exist. Now, you may have to move out of your current circle of friends to find them. Fine. But do yourself a favor this year. Align yourself with like-minded people. Find someone. Man, You, they got groups for everything. We talked about they got Facebook groups for everything. They got all types of... You, Erwin the Fire has a song that says, Gonna find a few to always walk with you. Many people claim don't always bleed the same. Listen to me. You can find somebody who thinks the way you do. So that's the first thing I want you to do. Align yourself with like-minded people. The next thing I want you to do to really, really help yourself out, get committed. Get committed, y'all. It was a funny thing. Do you mind if I share this story? No. Uh, uh, This morning, Junior came in, and he was a little late for our writers' meeting. And Junior had on a baseball hat and, you know, a sweatshirt and slacks and 
Junior, Junior looked like he, he got ran over. And I said, Junior, you all right? And he said, yeah, yeah, Uncle, I'm fine, man. Made it in. Sorry about that. I'm a little late. He wasn't that late, but, you know, he apologized for being late and everything. And I was looking at him. He just wasn't himself. Eyes was half mass. And had that baseball head on. He, was he said, man, Uncle, I'm struggling, man. He said, man, I don't know how you do it. He said, I don't know how you do it. And I had to give Junior a talk. I said, you know what, Junior? Because I have a job where I can't call in on. I don't have an option of not showing up. I can't be late. I have to show up. And I have to be on point. Because the job I have, I have no option. I'm either on radio, I'm on TV, I'm on set. I'm on camera, I'm on mic, I'm on somewhere. So I can't afford it. So I said, Junior, you know what I do? I come in here and I bring the best me to work that I can possibly be. I don't, I try not to let people see me in a dismal state because so many people are looking to me for inspiration and so many people are counting on me to have a good day so they can keep working. So if I have a good day, everybody else can have a good day. If the person at the top is having a bad day, uh, it trickles down. And as I talked to Junior, I went on and got dressed for the show. I got in the barber chair, did my thing. I looked up at lunch break, and Junior came into my dressing room. He had went back home. He put on a suit, a tie. He straightened up. He came in, he was bright, he was sharp. I said, Junior, what's up? He said, "Uh, after talking to you, I went home and started over. He said, I just started over, man. He said, you told me something, that you can't let them see you in a dismal state, that you, you got to practice being ready. You got to be on ready set just in case they say go. He changed his clothes and came back he looked like, and you know what? He said, I'm back. I'm back. Man, Junior, back. And he was happy. And he walked around the set all day just like that. And Junior's energy, he has an energy that's contagious. Like he's such a person that brings such a light into a room. People like seeing him come around. You got people like that who you love to see come around because they light. They bring a, uh, they, a jovialness to the room, or a lightheartedness, kind of make everybody feel good. I'd rather be that person. I don't ever want to be the person where when I walk in the room, oh, hell, here he come. What's wrong now? Just like a black cloud following me in the room. I'm not going to be that. You can be the best you, but you got to get committed, man. You got to com- you got to get committed to being a better you. You got to make a conscious decision that this year you're going to be a better you. But guess what? That decision is totally up to you. It's completely yours. Ain't nobody not allowing you to be a better you. There's some people, there's some things gonna come up, throw up some roadblocks, but nobody can stop you from bettering yourself. If you decide that you're gonna smile more today, no matter what happens, guess what? You can get to grinning. If you decide today that you're gonna meet more people today, you can start shaking hands. The decision is yours, y'all. But those two things, if you align yourself with like-minded people and if you get committed, be committed to being a better you. Start with simple stuff. Man, I'm going to have a better attitude this year. I'm going to have a better attitude every day. I'm not going to come to work with no sour look on my face. Be a better you. It'll carry over into every aspect of your life. If you start your day off being the best you you can be, it'll carry over into every aspect of your life. And if you become a better you, you're going to have a better life. That's the real deal. That's it. Keep talking to God. Pray, ask for guidance and assistance, and see if God don't show you the way. That's my remarks today. Drop it, Drop man. It. You got to pick it back up. <laughs> We're out, Steve. Yeah. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 